What's going on, everyone? <laughs> it has been a little while since I've had my grail knife. Um, and we use the term grail, I think, very loosely in general. This is the Frank Fisher battle. And I got this back in March from my good buddy. And I wanted to just kind of go over this and I'll give some standard specs and we'll really zoom in and talk about some of the level of detail, why it's worth the price that it was, which was a lot. And I won't talk about the exact price, but it is the most expensive knife in my collection by far. It is more expensive than any of the watches that I have individually. Um, yeah, so it costs a pretty penny. I am completely happy with the purchase. I am completely happy with the experience. I do not regret anything that I sold to make this happen. And I literally have not really bought any knives since March when I bought this because I just don't necessarily feel the need, I guess. So let's dive into this. And I am shooting this in 4K. This will be the first video I've ever done in 4K just because I think it warrants it. And I still don't think I am going to do this knife justice. So let's just talk about the specs really quick out of the way, and then we'll zoom in and take a really close look at this. So it's five and an eighth closed, nine and one sixteenths overall. The blade is 3.95 with a 3.84 cutting edge. It's Nicholas Boomerang, Boomerang Core Damascus. The blade thickness is 0.181. Overall thickness is 0.716 minus the clip, runs on bearings, and weighs in at 10.1 ounces. Yeah, so that's the basics. Let's zoom in here and just take a... a, a my setup does not do this justice, I guarantee and I've got some other notes listed that I will get to in just a second about all the materials here. But I'm going to try to zoom in and just give you guys a look at just the quality and the fit and the finish. And I hope that it's carrying through the video well. Because it's just amazing. I can't do it justice on video or pictures, I am sure. I have posted a lot on Facebook and Instagram, but I just don't know that it really captures the sheer beauty, quality, and craftsmanship that Frank puts into each and every one of his builds. It's just amazing. There is nothing on here that's lacking in detail. It's just, yeah. Now let me get a light here so you can see inside. The liners are engine turned on the inside. Hidden hardware for everything. You saw no screws on the outside other than the pivot. A little bit of dust. I tried to wipe all that out before. But just incredible. And it's incredibly comfortable in the hand. We'll zoom back out. It fits great in the hand. It feels great. Now, I, I get it. This is much more of an art type knife. This is not something you are going to hard use at all. It has a very distinctive sound. I'm not sure if that's going to come through or not. 
But and it's not a drop shut action. Got to shake it. But it's smooth. Fires every time. Really nice jimping right where it needs to be. So the materials, uh, the pivot is Nicholas Mokutai one piece pivot that Frank machines out on his CNC. These are his custom pivots. See if it'll focus there. And the um, this is the same material as the blade, the Nicholas Boomerang Core Damascus for the bolsters as well, I believe. Yes. And they're heavily chamfered here for the pivot. I don't know that that's really going to come out, but yeah. So this is not something that there's a tool for. I'm not going to be taking this apart and cleaning it. There will not be there will be no disassembly video. Because yeah, look at that. I just I think that's about as close as we can get and focus on the pivot. Okay, and then the liner, the uh, scales is a four alloy zirku tie for the scales and the clip. The backspacer is the same Nicholas Boomerang Core Damascus as the blade. The liners are three alloy moku tie. So you have kind of a, a theme here. It's kind of dark light, dark light on the blade. So it's kind of dark, then lighter on the liners, darker on the, the blade, light in the center core, and then so on, all the way through. It's just, it's amazing. In talking to Frank before I bought this, I had asked him, you know, hey, are you building any? Would you be interested in building me one? Blah, blah, blah. And he said, yes, I'm building, you know, give me three to six months. They start at X and they go up from there. I told him that I was trying to work a deal with my buddy to buy this one. He goes, oh, yeah. And he told me about it, told me what the retail, you know, the normal price was on this. I got a bit of a deal because it was a friend. So we worked that out. And then I did talk to Frank afterwards and he gave me all the, all the details that I just gave you. You know, he kind of walked me through. I sent him some pictures. He impressed himself. He looked at it. He, he didn't remember, you know, each one. There's less than 10 full dress battles like this, he said. And he says in this one, he has about 150 hours in this build. There's about 60 to 65 total parts and pieces in a battle. And the final assembly, once everything is, you know, like the final, final, right? Because he's assembled it and taken it apart, machined it, assembled it, hand finished, hand sanded, you know, whatnot. Put it back together. He does a lot of his own CMC and C machining. But it's countless hours of assembly, disassembly, assembly, disassembly. He says it's about two hours. Once everything is fit and perfect, he's got to take it all apart clean it all one last time, get the Loctite, put it all together. It's about two hours just to assemble it for the last time, he said. And that's part of that 150-ish hours, give or take. That's a lot of time to put into one knife. And hence the thousands and thousands of dollar price tag. I sold a lot of stuff. I think a lot of you were on the journey with me as I sold some watches. I sold a bunch of Medfords. I sold some big knives. I sold a lot to be able to fund this knife because this was and always has been my grail knife. My buddy Alex over at the Knife Box channel, I told him about I had an opportunity to get this. I sent him a picture. And he told me, dude, just get it. You only live once. So I kind of blame him. But actually, I give him the credit for pushing me to actually 
pull the trigger on this. And as long as I've known Alex and we've been talking about knives and what's your grail knife and all this stuff, the battle was and always has been my grail. Like my true holy grail that I always wanted. And we'll just do a couple size comparisons as I tell the story with the Sharpie here. And it's true. I never thought I was going to get something this fancy. Okay. I didn't, I didn't expect that. How about the spider Codelica? But I had the opportunity, so I took it. I don't regret a thing about it. Now, we use the term grail all the time. And to me, what a grail is, this is the quiet carry waypoint, is something that's, uh, that, that hurts to obtain. Whether it's price, whether it's availability, whether it's you have to wait a long time because you have to order it and they have to make it. How about Big Red? Todd Big Bodega. One of three in the G10, the red G10 for size comparison. So that's my idea of a grail is one, there's an expense to it. Two, it's an availability thing. If, if, if you can readily go in and buy something, then to me, it's not really a grail. Now, you could have a different opinion. How about the Demco AD20 in titanium? And I would love to hear your opinion on what a grail is down below, whether it's a grail knife, a grail watch, grail car, you know. I think a grail is different than a fantasy car or a dream car. Like, you know, as a guy, I think, you know, everybody growing up, we want a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, right? Is that really going to happen? No, not really, probably. So is that really a, a grail or a fantasy? I think a f grail is something that you can work towards getting. You may save for a year or two years to buy that Rolex watch, that Rolex Submariner maybe. That's the watch you've always dreamed of. That Frank Fisher battle that you always have dreamed of is as I started this knife collecting hobby. And this is the uh, Red Horse Hellraiser P-Series. So that to me is what a grail is. You know, there's expense to it. There's availability issues. It takes time effort and work. You can't just walk in the store and buy it. If you could just walk in the store and buy it, it's not really a grail, in my opinion. And I think on Facebook and Instagram, everybody throws around the grail term way too much. Because they see the same people. Hey, I got my grail. And then next week, oh, I got my, my grail. And it's a different knife that came in the mail. Oh, I got my grail. It's a different knife. I mean, you maybe have different opinions, and, 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 I'm, and I'm okay with that. But to me, this really is my holy grail. And I have been completely content. And I literally, the only knives I've bought since I bought this in March, I just bought this AD20. Like yesterday at the time of filming this. I bought this and the, te uh, the textured version that I had loaned in from Wild About Sporting Goods. I bought both of these because I couldn't decide which one I wanted. So I bought them both. That's the first knife I've bought since March of 2021. And it is now end of May 2021. I know that's not a long time. March to April to May. It's, it's two months. Almost three months since I bought a knife. But I was buying knives every week. And then I sold a bunch to get the battle. And I've since not had anything excite me. And I don't even know if the AD20s excited me, but I kind of felt as though I needed to buy them because they're so hot. And I wanted to experience them for a little while. So you guys tell me, what do you think is a grail? 
What is your definition of grail? I will put a link down below to my unboxing of this where I talk a little bit more about grail also. Um, and I want to thank my friend who sold me this for allowing me to buy this and working a deal with me over the course of a couple of weeks because it was a big expense. I couldn't just pull the trigger instantly. I said, hey, can I give you X tomorrow and X next week? And, and we worked it out. And then we overnighted the shipping because I'm not going to let this sit in any shipping carrier for days and days. Not going to be the slow boat. It's overnight at 10.30 a.m. delivery, you know, early delivery, whatever it was. Uh, so thank you for him. Thank you to Frank for chatting with me about this after I already bought it. I bought it on the secondary market, but Frank was so gracious to just chat with me about it and take time out of his day to explain a knife that he had built for somebody else previously as the new owner. So I, I appreciate that time. As I'm closing it here, I need to point out one thing that really talks about detail to me. I totally skipped this. As you release the liner lock, there is no more room. Like it's a perfect fit. Do I have another liner lock here? I think I do. This is the KB237. There is room for the liner to go farther over to the scale here. There's a little bit of a gap. It's kind of hard to pick up on because that one's all black. What about the, this one might do it better. So there is a little bit of room for this to go against the scale. So right now the blade is completely free floating. It's past the detent here, but there's room. On the battle, there's no room. It's perfectly mated. I don't know if that can really, if we can really see that. Ah, here we go. There's just no room between the liner and the scale. It's perfectly fit. With the flashlight, you can kind of see the coloring a little bit better. It does say Fisher on the inside of the backspacer there. It's kind of hard to get the light right. There you go. F Fisher. I just, every time I pick this up, still to this day, let's just kind of walk through it with the light. Shine on it here just to see if there's anything else you pick up. Every time I pick this up, I get a smile. I think that's another definition of grail. That every time you pick it up, you look at it and you smile and you feel happy. So there you go, guys. This is my holy grail. I have nothing else on my list that would top this, I think, ever. I don't know how I could top it. And there's really nothing else that I'm excited to get. I mean, I think the next thing that I'm excited to kind of get is a custom Hellraiser that I haven't even talked to them about getting yet. I just keep in my mind, I want to get one at some point. That's it. But I, I don't know, guys. Let me know your thoughts about Grail Knives and this one in particular, if you like. Uh, but I would love to hear what is your Grail. What are you hoping to get in your future? All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. I do greatly appreciate your time, as always. I know that this one went long. I rambled a lot. So thanks for sticking with me if you're still here. And if you are still here, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.